Introduction, a true story. This is a true story of David Clark, born in Oldham, Lancashire in 1949. During the 60s, he and his brother Michael began to enjoy lives of crime, promiscuity and infamy during their teenage years. Whilst living in Aylesbury, Buckinghamshire, and they lived with their parents and younger sister, where they became criminals. They were both sent to prison in 1967 for malicious wounding and carrying a firearm without a licence. David served his time in a young person's Borstal Training Institute at Dover, and Michael served his time in Maidstone Prison. On leaving Dover Borstal in 1968, David was determined to have a good time, living a life of crime with no fear or belief in God respectful society, parents, or the wider family. He proceeded on a three-year career of undetected crime until he met a Christian woman who informed him that his lifestyle was wrong. It became David's opinion that Christianity was for people who could not enjoy life or stand on their own two feet. On the 16th of January 1970, David was arrested whilst he experienced a bad LSD trip, but not by the police. It was by Jesus Christ who spoke to him. Jesus said to David that the horrors that he had experienced was nothing compared to what hell was like. David turned away that Friday night from a sinful life of crime and immorality to follow Christ as best he could. David began to read the Bible immediately and other Christian books and attended a wide range of churches. He finally confessed to the police to 24 crimes that he had committed during his release from Borstal in 1968 and his conversion in January 1970. David eventually joined the Beaton Strict and Particular Baptist Church in 1974 and then trained as a lecturer, commencing teaching electronics at Luton College of Higher Education and lectured for over 22 years in colleges of further and higher education until 2001. The Beaton Church, which was founded in 1831, became a gospel standard listed cause, and in 1982, David was called by the Lord and sent by the church to preach the gospel wherever the Lord opened the door for him to speak. David then sought to reach his old friends from the past and organised a preaching meeting at the Beaton Chapel in 1983, inviting all his old friends to come and hear of all what the Lord had done for him. Providentially, that preaching meeting was televised on video and is available on YouTube under the title David Preaching at Beaton Strict of Particular Baptist, 5th of June 1983. David recalls that it became apparent after this meeting his troubles really began and he seceded from the Beaton Church in 1984. An account of his secession has been written by David's own hand entitled The Beaton Crisis, which is part of this new book. This story is a complete account of David's early life, experience of conversion from crime to Christ, and life in the Beaton Strict of Particular Baptist Church. He concludes that men may begin well in their faith towards God, trusting in the person and finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ alone for salvation, but then fall from grace, falling into the error of seeking to please God by works according to their own inventions or distortions of the law of Moses. They then fall into the trap of making themselves perfect in the flesh and then judge others who do not act like them. The story continues to the time of Michael, his older brother's arrest in the Philippines in 1995 and his 16-year prison sentence. The story goes on through to Michael's own conversion from crime to Christ in New Bilibi prison some 30 years after David's own conversion to Christianity. This occurred after he was convinced that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the Living God, through reading C.S. Lewis's book, Mere Christianity. It tells of his baptism as a Christian in an old army oil drum in that prison in September 2000. Sadly, Michael died in prison of tuberculosis in 2005. This story demonstrates the manifold grace of God in saving two brothers from a life of sin, crime and immorality through the person and work of the Lord Jesus Christ. This book is really David's confession and testimony written for the defence and confirmation of the gospel. David also believes the things that have happened to him have fallen out rather for the furtherance of the gospel. Philippines 1 verses 7 through to 12. 
David's solution to help and assist in the promotion of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is the creation of the Beer and Particular Baptist and Open College, Access via the internet at www.beerandparticularbaptist.co.uk. Those wishing to be trained and educated in the doctrines of grace can enrol and obtain all the assistance they need. Chapter 1. Confession to 24 Crimes. The Court Case. It was real, absolutely real, but none of my friends really believed me. All I could do was tell them what had happened to me. And that was what I did. I told them all, the long, the short and the tall, as many of them as I could. They thought I'd gone mad after taking LSD. Jesus Christ had spoken to me and rescued me from a bad LSD trip on Friday evening, the 16th of January, 1970. He had said that what I'd been going through was nothing compared to what hell was like. I now knew the way and was determined to tell the others. I'd become a Christian and no longer needed to live the lifestyle that I'd adopted, which had involved crime, drugs, promiscuity, flash cars and fame. I'd been born again. I was now responsible for sorting out all my stolen gear, what could be done with a builder's shed, stolen cars. I still had in my possession a 48-foot, a 24-foot builder's shed, which had been stolen one night from a building site at Berkhamstead, a lovely G-registered mini stolen from Hamon Hempstead, which was in the process of being rung. Ringing meant replacing the old mini with the legitimate registration documents and number plates with a new one. My new stolen Mini was being used to replace it. This was to be my new car. I also had a Morris Minor Traveller that had been rung and it was being used as a hire car. I'd stolen garage equipment which included an air compressor, electric welding equipment, spray guns and a trolley jack. I also had several pieces of electrical test equipment which included oscilloscopes, AVO meters and colour TV sets. I had all the garage equipment I needed to repair and spray cars. I had a lovely Citroen DS car in the builder's shed, which was being repaired. I obtained this car through swapping it for a colour TV set. The only problem was that I'd stolen the TV set from an old people's home in Redfields in Winslow, Buckinghamshire. I also had two nice speedboat engines ready for the summer in 1970. All in all, I had a good time, a real good time, full of excitement and fun. In fact, I'd been stopped in the midst of my career, which involved stealing all kinds of goods and having a good time. I'd intended to have a caravan, a speedboat, water skis, aqualung diving gear, flash cars, motorbikes and clothes, and so on, all through stealing. I had been stopped whilst in the midst of my career, but not by the police. It was Jesus Christ who had called me by name, and I followed him. What was I to do with all my stolen goods after becoming a Christian? I thank God he intervened again a year later and his hand was clearly seen once more. I had no one else to help. As I write this, I take encouragement in the faithfulness of God to me in never leaving me or forsaking me. I realize now I was kept through the power and grace of the Lord Jesus Christ to bear witness today to many people of the goodness and mercy of God. The problem was solved by a visit from the police, the CID. I was sitting at the table in our kitchen at 37 Finmere Crescent one evening in late 1971, when a knock came on the door. I had two visitors, a Detective Constable Robson and a younger man. I was greeted quite politely, but with these sure and certain words, you're charged with stealing a colour TV set and would you accompany us down to the police station to make a statement? I knew instantly what I must do and say. I saw the hand of God and believed this was all he's doing, but I did not know the outcome. Leaving the outcome to God, I asked the two men to sit down at the kitchen table, and I admitted to the charge. At this, DC Robson seemed most relieved, for he said to me later he had thought I would be a really difficult customer and awkward and deny the charge. I explained I would certainly come with them to the police station and make a statement, but I wanted to speak to them about other things first. I said I had many crimes I wished to tell them about, but wanted to tell them first of all why I was informing them. I wanted it to be known that they would not have been able to find out about my crimes unless I confessed to them. 
and I wanted to testify to the saving work of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he had saved me from my former criminal way of life a year previously, and that I did not wish to get off lightly with this confession, but rather bear testimony for Christ. For in no way could my crimes be discovered unless I tell them and own up to them. I had a lot of stolen property which could now be returned. I went with them to the police station and spent the rest of the evening writing statements, giving details of my crimes. I was detained that evening in the police cell at Walton Street Police Station in Aylesbury. Not that I was a stranger to police cells. My shoelaces were removed, but I was allowed my New Testament authorised version Working Man's Pocket Edition. I had to appear in Aylesbury Magistrates Court on the 9th of February 1971 and answered two charges of burglary and one of theft. I also asked for 21 other crimes of theft to be taken into consideration, all of which had been committed since I left Dover Borstal in September 1967 to the 16th of January 1970. I had decided I did not need legal representation as I would speak for myself. With my past record of probation and Borstal training, it was quite expected that I would be sent to prison, at least for three years. I was quite okay with this because I deserved it and I believe God was in this and had a definite purpose in this event. I prepared for this by setting my affairs in order at home and gave directions that my mini traveller which I had rebuilt was to be given to Barry Crown if I was sent to prison. I believed that whatever happened to me, the outcome was of God and there would be a good reason for it. I thought I might be being sent to prison so as to preach the gospel to inmates. A friend of mine, Mr Peter Murray, was concerned about my court appearance and suggested I get written testimonials from some of my Christian friends and he felt he ought to appear in person and speak on my behalf in the court. The friends who wrote were Barry Crown, Cyril Bryan, Tommy Thompson and Eric Connett. I'm including their letters which were sent to the court. These people all testified to the saving grace of God in changing my life. These are some of the written testimonials. Testimony of Barry Crown to the clerk to the magistrates. Dear Sir, 6th of February 1970. I'm a graduate of Salford University and hold a BSc in Civil Engineering. I am at present an employee of Aylesby Borough Council working under Mr Hanney, the Borough Engineer and Surveyor. I have held this post since September 1970. Shortly after taking up residence in Aylesbury, I befriended Mr David Clark, whom I met at the Full Gospel Church, Rickfords Hill. I found David to be a true and sincere Christian seeking to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and to give personal testimony of the salvation through Jesus Christ, which he himself had experienced and had a subsequent change in his whole manner and outlook to life. Before his conversion, he confessed to a life of drugs and theft, but now he no longer had any desire or pleasure in such things, since Christ destroyed the power of such in his life. For the six months that I have known David, I have been a witness to the truth and sincerity of his testimony, and I know him to be a person who is a completely honest and trustworthy follower of the Christian faith. Your sincerely, R.B. Crown. Testimony of Cyril Bryan. To the clerk, to the magistrates, 2nd of the 2nd, 1971. Dear Sir, I am privileged to write a testimony to you concerning David Clark, and I count it a privilege because it is to the glory of God. I have known this young man through conversations and meeting with him through the church I attend in Aylesbury, the full gospel testimony church at Rickfords Hill. What I wish to bring to your notice is the wonderful change that's taken place in him as a result of him believing the gospel and receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal saviour, according to the scriptural instruction and ordinances. The change of character and speech is miraculous, as are all the works of God. And as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ for over 30 years, I know that David Clark is a transformed person by the grace of God, as are all who know the reality of the new birth as taught in John's Gospel. You will know his past life. I testify to his new life in Christ Jesus. Yours sincerely, Cyril Bryan. Testimony of Mr. E. Connett, to whom it may concern. This is to certify that I have known Mr. Clark for a period of approximately nine months since his conversion to Christianity. I am fully persuaded that he has turned his back on his past life and changed for the better. 
he is now earnestly and endeavouring to make amends for his past mistakes and even influences others to turn their lives over to God, as he has done. My object in writing this testimonial is that it may help to throw some light on David's character from one who knows him as a Christian. Yours faithfully, E. Connett. <laughs>